And uh, I would like to start uh, by uh, acknowledging the support of uh, the Kenya Computer Society, Dr. Silanga, who has been uh, wonderful helping us in uh, putting together this event. And uh, along uh, also uh, Can Invest, which we always has always been our partners in every group with Kenya. Also the Kenza Technopolis Development Authority. Mauritius, uh, the Air Sourcing Telecommunication Association of Mauritius, OTEM, and METEA, which is the Mauritius IT Association. So in collaboration with all these uh, agencies, today the EDB has the pleasure to welcome you all uh, to this uh, session, webinar session, where the objective is a little bit of understanding of the capacities, capabilities, and the opportunities that we have, capabilities and, and, and competencies, Mauritius, Kenya, and also the market, and uh, these uh, opportunities that we have in the East African market that we can work uh, together and try to tap into this market. I think this is an excellent uh, opportunity for us to share understand how we can collaborate in the future, especially that Mauritius is establishing a platform for professional services in the region, uh, more specifically in financial services and now fintech and IT as well. And we know that Kenya is already the, the African, uh, we call it the, the silicon uh, savvy of, of the world, and also the, the, the home of disruptive technologies such as uh, mobile banking and so on. So certainly I think there's huge opportunities for us to learn from each other and, and understand the opportunities that we can uh, share with each other going forward. So I wouldn't be wasting a lot of time because we have one hour and we have a lot of wonderful speakers that have been selected. I will just name them. We have Rogers Capital from Mauritius. We will have Mr. Manish Hadjwani from Rogers Capital. And then we will have Mr. Shalendra Singh from Botex Lab Limited. And then we will have Mrs. Christine Durand from LCPS Limited, which will share a little bit of what are the latest developments that are happening in Mauritius. They will have five minutes each. Please try to maintain as we are pressing for time, the importance today is not to try and, and do a marketing uh, element for your organization, it's just to give an understanding to our friends and brothers in Kenya uh, what is being done in Mauritius so that they can better get back to you and say, I would like to partner with Mauritian companies to try and tap into opportunities identified across the African continent altogether. And then eventually we're going to have in interventions from Dr. Siganga, the chairman of the Computer Society of Kenya, and also uh, Josephine uh, Ndambuki from uh, Konza Techno Technopolis Development Authority, and Mr. Norman, uh, Mr. Norman uh, from uh, the head of sector from Kenya. So this, they will give us a perspective of developments that are happening in Kenya and how significant this collaborative work can take us going forward. So with that, I would like to welcome Mr. Manish Rachwani to uh, share with us for the five minutes the development of Rogers Capital. Thank you, Manish. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Vinay. And, uh... A warm welcome to everybody on this uh, on this call today. So I will quickly let me just share my screen quickly. Uh, I know I have been given just five minutes, so I'll try to deliver everything possible within these five minutes. All right. Can you can you all see my screen? Maybe if you can confirm if you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see. Yes, I can. Okay, great. All right, thank you. So I'm from uh, Rogers Capital Technology. So Rogers Capital Technology, we uh, we are a company based in Mauritius and operating in the uh, in the Indian Ocean region. So we we are part of the Rogers Group uh, and the ENL Group in Mauritius. So as you know, uh, the like uh, like everywhere, the groups tend to have. Uh, different business activities. They tend to be in different different industries. So coming to Rogers Capital Technology, we we are very much focused on uh, on everything regarding IT, digital and telecom services in the in the region. So what we have done today, uh, I have put up some uh, a couple of slides to give you an idea, uh, maybe a, a, a bigger insight of who we are, 
who Rogers Capital Technologies, what do we do? So as you will see here on this uh, on the screen, we we provide a very diverse range of services in terms of so, sorry, I, I can't IT. see the screen. Include I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot see the screen. Uh, 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 and security services which have just come on board Manish is going, uh, going yeah. online. We have trouble hearing you, Manish. Is it you? Anybody else that cannot see the screen? Or is, it, is, uh, is it okay now? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I can see the screen very clearly and I can also hear Manish very clearly. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I can see Manish, but I cannot see the screen. We will proceed with you afterwards, so we will proceed because the rest of the people can see the screen. So Manish, please proceed. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So uh, basically, as I was saying, so we we are in uh, in uh, in diverse fields under the under the technology domain. And we provide uh, uh, things like enterprise infra ranging from digital to uh, manage connectivity and cybersecurity. Now, the focus of our discussion today, we want to share with you uh, what we've been doing in the in the disruption space. So, first of all, uh, first of all, as you will see in this next slide, uh, the we can say that the underlying factor with regards to digital transformation is connectivity. That's one of the core. We can say one of the core pillars. Uh, in uh, in uh, in our industry. So what we've done over the years, we have uh, we have built a, a full fledged international network. So as you will see from Mauritius, we can say that we are we are uh, we are among the ones who are very well connected in the African region, uh, in Asia, in uh, in Europe, and now uh, moving towards the US. So this this is a back that we have set and you will see on uh, on this slide that we are very well connected uh, into Kenya. So we go via South Africa or we can go directly into Kenya. We have diversity in terms of cables, uh, peering. So for those who are in the telecoms business, a lot of peering is happening in Africa. So basically how, how we are differentiating ourselves is in terms of services and latencies, a bit of the of the of the technical jargon. And uh, why I'm sharing this slide with you is that because this is the underlying factor for us to enable the whole transformation to take place. So this is the core of, of, uh, of our business. Now moving on, one is now we want to build service on top of that. Now we have markets where we have business cases. We put these technologies on the on the market and to serve our customers. Now, lately, in terms of transformation, we have built a whole ecosystem, a whole ecosystem of technologies to make it such that companies can benefit either from their top line or on their bottom line. So when I say top line, in fact, we what we always say, our philosophy is that technology needs to work for us. We need not work for technology. So that's having that on the in the back of our mind. We've developed certain technologies. I mean, lately it's been uh, three or four years now that this digital factory capability has come up with the cutting edge ones. Like uh, if you will know about robotics process automation, we work a lot on, uh, uh, on on workflow automation. So what we do, we don't just use one technology. It's a whole ecosystem. Now on this slide that you uh, that you're seeing, it's mainly about one process that we that we automate to ensure that those companies who are using such technologies they are they are improving in terms of speed, operational excellence, operational efficiency, and uh, even in terms of their customer experience and employee morale. So why do I say employee morale? I'll give you a quick example. Let's say we have a, a process of accounts payable in the company. We have to treat 1,000, 2,000 invoices. Now you have a person or a team that has to come daily. They have to process it end to end. It's tedious, it's mechanical, it's very voluminous and repetitive. Now what we are saying is that we human beings, we have intelligence. We are not meant to do this boring and mechanical job. So, of course, in the past, we didn't have anything to replace that. But now we have these softwares, we have these robots and let them do the boring job and let's add more value. Let us do more value added activities. So that being said, we have launched this capability and today we are helping the search companies and we believe that this can be a very good technology even for our encounter. I'm sure many of you must already be looking into it or if not implementing it. But what we are doing here, we are providing such kinds of services 
and everything being delivered is delivered in house. So we have our own team of experts who are well versed, who are well certified to be able to deliver the next wave of transformation, which we call uh, uh, in this particular concept is the digital finance. So you have RPA as a technology, and then on top of that, we build a whole ecosystem so that we can have different applications working towards one specific goal. So that's basically what uh, what we do in this uh, in the digital transformation space. And we are very much open to, to talking to our Kenyan uh, Kenyan counterparts, Kenyan companies who want to learn more about how how we are transforming business, how we are bringing in those disciplinary technologies, of course, well entrenched in uh, everything regarding AI and uh, and machine learning. Thank Quickly you. speaking, before I uh, before I close, we've done various projects, as you will see down here on the on the left, uh, across various industries, across various sectors. So if you feel like this is something that can add value to your business, please, we are we are very open to talk. Thank you very much. Ganesh, thank you for being brief and succinct. So I'm sure there will be a lot of questions uh, later on. Uh, just so sure. I would like to acknowledge also Mr. Clara Constance and Mr. Ranvia Sitalu, which I will get back to you after the presentations. Uh, I just skip that part, my apologies, uh, but we will we will get to you after the free presentation. So let's move next to Mr. Shalan Dressing from Biotech Lab Limited uh, to do his five minutes speech. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is my screen visible? Not yet. Not yet. All right. Just a second. We can see now. Please proceed, Andrew. Yes. <clears throat> so thank you so much, uh, ADB, as well as uh, uh, counterpart in Kenya, uh, for giving this opportunity. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, am I audible as well? Please, please proceed. Yeah. So my name is Shalanda Singh. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Botics Labs. This is a uh, bootstrap organization uh, started uh, back in 2018. I'm sure it's not, my slides is moving yeah. or not? No, they're not moving. Uh, please, please proceed uh, because we will be running out of team. So just share the the, the understanding of what you do. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm just trying to. Maybe the control is. It's not coming 100% with me. Sharanda, just give an overview of the capabilities that you have, uh, and then we will move to uh, ICPS in, in three, four minutes. All right, all right. So, uh, sorry for sorry for uh, this glitch. Uh, uh, so, this uh, uh, Botics organizations we started in uh, 2018, and uh, we are bootstrap, and uh, basically it's a research and the product based advisory firm. We are focusing on emerging technologies. Like uh, my fellow friend uh, Manisha has already mentioned, they are also into the same industry, uh, robotic process automation. So we are, are moving a little bit advanced with artificial intelligence mix. So we we say it intelligence process automations and uh, product development for uh, especially for uh, fintech insurance and uh, uh, finance investment and banking manufacturing. So there are vertical industries we have been uh, working alone. So what is what is uh, so uh, special about us? Uh, our technology independence and the in-house uh, tacti tactical products and uh, original design solutions, which gives us a, a little bit of age, and uh, we uh, help our customers to make and realize their digital transformations uh, journey fruitful. So we at the Botics Lex, we are developing products and solutions in our AI lab, uh, which help organizations to solve the, their business X uh, business problems. So in terms of our, our product lines, uh, we have developed some uh, uh, top-notch uh, 
recently uh, in highlighted like uh, anti money laundering uh, Mauritius has come into the uh, FATF release and uh, accordingly we help uh, some financial in organizations how to how to accelerate their screening process as well as uh, there are some uh, other other products uh, OCR based as well as the time catcher where you uh, have some real time automatic uh, time and the productivity tracking project management capabilities. Uh, my fellow friend has already mentioned about the RPA. So in RPA, uh, there is a hyper automation when you mix RPA and the AI. And uh, uh, in that, there are the four quadrants of every organization's uh, uh, front office, middle office, back office and RT operations. So this RPA is has uh, has touched upon all the quadrants and uh, we have been we have been doing uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, some amazing, amazing uh, uh, projects. Where we have been developing uh, and helping the organizations to adapt to the digitalizations at the at the faster rate. So not only uh, RPA product and services, we also assist our 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 uh, uh, partners to build the virtual CUI. So we basically work on a two models. One is uh, built, operate, and transfer, and the another one is a built, operate, and maintain. So uh, I would have loved to share a one. Uh, uh, use case where we have uh, developed uh, for one of our client in Kenya that is a subsidy of uh, sim finance so the the company is a credit betting and the finance leasing company in, in Kenya that name is Aspira so their uh, KYC onboarding process customer onboarding at the, as well as the customer servicing disbursement of uh, I would say uh, the loan amount and the credit amount on the fly and uh, accordingly, we have developed uh, some uh, fraud checks and, uh, and uh, credit vetting uh, uh, bots. So these are helping uh, greatly to the small organizations. And uh, this is small organization is digital enabled, where they have the less number of uh, full time employees, but they are hugely dependent on the technologies. So in this context, we have developed and uh, you can just imagine the, uh, per day 200 applications are coming and uh, there are uh, uh, at least four sets of the digital documents and best statement that is a lifeline of the Kenyan market or ecosystem and uh, you have your uh, national ID card uh, your bank statements and uh, salary slips so all these uh, four documents are digitally authenticated because uh, as as we see the more digital uh, uh, exposed economy more chances of digital frauds so the authentications as well as the digital tampering has to be handled by digital means so accordingly we have designed a solutions that gives uh, uh, digital proof and uh, give the uh, their decisions making faster and quicker so uh, yeah. we have been we have been working with uh, some uh, uh, Mauritian as well as the Indian and UK, US, Thailand, as well as uh, some Kenyan and South African uh, players as well. And uh, happy to have your answers or happy to have any queries where we can uh, uh, see this synchronizations as well as the coordinations. So I will, I will take all your questions uh, and I will try to share the slides with all the uh, attendees. Uh, sorry for the this glitch and uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, certainly, there will be questions afterwards, surrender, and I'm sure uh, people from both sides, whether from Mauritius or from Kenya, would certainly want to in touch with you, so you can yeah. make sure uh, that happens. So now we had the pleasure to welcome uh, Mrs. Christine Durand from USCPS that will provide minutes try to give us an understanding of what's being developed for Mauritius. Thank you, Christine. So to you. So thank you. Good afternoon to you all. I'm just going to start by sharing my screen. There we go. If you, I hope you can all see it. Is it good? Can you all see my screen? Hello? Yes, we can. Very clearly. Yes, we can see your screen. OK, very good. So I'm delighted to join you for this event today and express my gratitude to the EDB for organizing this event. Um, so let me start by giving you an insight about ICPS because I know that time is very critical today, so I'll try to be very fast. 
Um, I put a maximum information again, like my two uh, my two previous colleagues, but uh, obviously if there's more questions after, I'll be happy to answer those. So who is ICPS? So ICPS um, is a leading a card processing uh, payment platform uh, that is based out in Mauritius. So we've been operational since 2008, but uh, since then we have grown uh, quite massively, I have to say. So today uh, we have over 30 clients that are running on our production platform. And these clients range between banks, financial institutions, aggregators, mobile network operators, etc. So wherever there is a need for payment processing, the platform is able to address this requirement. So with all these clients today, we host uh, uh, 3.4 million cards, we drive 11,000 POSs, ATMs, etc. But I think the most important thing, I, I could go on for 10 hours on, on this slide, but I'll, I'll just focus on the important things. So what's important uh, as a payment processor today is to be able to, uh, to give a one-stop shop solution. So today when you outsource your solutions, uh, unfortunately, it's not everywhere that, that, uh, that you can have it all under one roof. So we're happy to say that we provide processing, but also card personalization for those banks or institutions that require the plastics. And uh, there's the back office, which surely doesn't need to be neglected because this is where uh, you make money. There's consultancy, IT security training. Um, so whatever your requirements are, if you're in the payment processing business, you can find it all under one roof and that's ICPS. So now I'll go straight into uh, why we're having this conversation today. So maybe um, just a small, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but uh, uh, you, you, you will see that uh, we are uh, present in over 22 countries and I'm happy to say that uh, Kenya is, uh, is part of our client base. So with uh, the COVID-19 2020 pandemic, we have seen a new picture of, you know, what the payment ecosystem looks like. So the thing is that now everyone is talking about low touch economy, no one wants to touch anything, etc. So with that, we have seen a lot of players on the market, a lot of fintechs, everyone wants a piece of the cake, obviously. But what, it, what is very important is to make sure that we address the problem and the problem is the customer. So what the customer really requires in line with what the laws allow us to do. So what is great about our platform is that it is open. It's an open platform where with our rich set of API um, that's available, we're able to collaborate and we're able to um, interact with other systems. So like Shalendra was saying before, he was talking about onboarding for KYC. So th this is part of, of, the, of the requirements today when you want to onboard a client if, if, I, if I look at the traditional system, you have to you know, produce the series of KYC like you was saying before, but that's part of it. So with our APIs today, we're able to um, integrate with KYC platforms to enable the client to never have to walk into the branch. So everything can be done online. It's a fully digital experience. So that can be done via different channels. So at ICPS, we have our own self-care solution, which is a white label solution that the bank or institution can use to be able to facilitate that process. So from the comfort of your home, you can onboard a new client, whether it's the KYC, the scoring, etc. The client has his card, a virtual card, obviously. He can use the card. If he needs a companion card, he can request for the PIN on the platform, on the, on the self-care application itself. We also have, thanks to the rich set of APIs, uh, collaborated and today we, we're also talking about competition because we don't really compete anymore otherwise it doesn't make sense if we all work together this is where the cake builds and this is where there's actually cake to be shared so um, we integrate with super apps that make lives of uh, different acquirers um, easier I have to say so for example if uh, to today uh, you're in let's say you're a big retail company uh, you could give one application uh, to your to the different merchants where everything is there. So uh, it's it, it's really the, the way the platform is built. Um, you have all the APIs that allow you to interconnect with everyone. So it's really a one. It goes along with our one-stop shop 
um, uh, motto, and uh, it's also it, it's also compliant with you know Europe's uh, requirements about open platform, etc. But what's most important is that it actually addresses um, what really customers are looking for. They don't want to walk into branches anymore. They don't want to have to, you know, uh, waste their time anymore. They don't want to touch anything. It's open. It's easy. It's easily integrated with all the different players of the market. Now, that being said, uh, all is digital is fine, but it, like books, you know, some people yeah. still, still like to touch. Uh, and uh, So obviously cards will not disappear. So physical cards will not disappear. However, the low touch, um, the low touch is still omnipresent and people don't want to touch the POSs anymore. But the thing is that with the contactless transactions, most of the implementations don't ask you for the PIN because otherwise it defeats the purpose of having a contactless transaction. It needs to be fast. It needs to be, it needs to obey a certain particular requirement for it to have a particular um, uh, business sense to be there. Example, transport. It's fast. It's rapid. Contactless will work there. So now what we're seeing here is that we're bringing biometrics uh, in the picture. Why? Because when your card is authenticated by your fingerprint, there's no need for pins anymore. There's no need to touch the POSs anymore. Now, what's interesting is that MasterCard published a report that said that in the Kenyan market, 99% of the population said they would be eager to try a new emerging payment method. So uh, that, that means that uh, there is, um, there is uh, certain eagerness in that market uh, for for uh, for people to be able to uh, to um, to test the new new solutions. But what's also interesting is that contrarily to uh, the shift from uh, chip and pin solutions to contactless, um, banks needed to invest a lot in changing the POS part. But with that particular solution, you don't need to do that. If your POSs are contactless enabled, and now it's a mandate by all the networks anyway, you don't have a choice. So your POSs need to be contactless enabled. There's no particular investment in that. So, yes. Do we have to? Can you just? Yes. Just yes. So, as, so as as I conclude, uh, what I would like to say is that Kenya is really going fast in the digital transformation. And uh, with our platform at ICPS, we believe that we can accompany uh, banks and financial institutions to place themselves up there and uh, while ensuring that, you know, security has got its rightful place in the picture. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. Uh, thank you for, for that. I'm sure there will be questions. Uh, I will have, uh, I would now uh, like to acknowledge uh, also the presence of the president of uh, the uh, Mitya, the Mauritius IT uh, Industry Association, uh, Mr. Ken Murray, uh, which will also come and give uh, us a little bit of understanding on how the sector, how we're driving sector-wide transformation in ICT for collaboration. Uh, Ken, my apologies, I uh, should have been in first, but I missed out that part. And uh, please, uh, uh, you and if you and Mr. Clarence Constance could just take us through uh, that understanding over the next five minutes. Thank you. Uh, we will get back to the to to the discussions afterwards. Thank you, Vinay, and uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, you can hear me there. Yes, we can. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, I was I was excited to hear all these high tech technology presentation. And I'm afraid the one that I'm going to make is not on technology. It's about the companies uh, that are operating in Mauritius providing these services. Therefore, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, basically, I'll just touch on a few points in terms of the association. Uh, I'll present myself. I'm Kem Mohi. I have been in the industry for the first for the last 30 years and um, the Mauritius IT Industry Association actually has been uh, there for 20 years now, right? It is one of the two main associations that groups companies from the industry. Uh, the other one you will hear a bit later, which is the BPO 
the association that groups the BPO in uh, companies. Uh, the IT Industry Association uh, that I'm con currently the president uh, groups the main IT companies in the island. Therefore, today the association has 42 members, right? mostly the main players uh, of the industry. And um, among these 42 companies, uh, there is a turn turnaround of some 350 million uh, USD in terms of uh, turnover. Right? Therefore, this is the size of the, uh, the total number of companies that form part of the association. Uh, roughly, these companies employ something like 4,000 high value jobs. Uh, therefore, these are mainly high end uh, service providers uh, in the software and hardware uh, market. The association has the main objective of promoting its members uh, and uh, the services that they offer. Therefore, through uh, partnership with EDB, for example, and other uh, agencies that are involved in the industry, we regularly uh, work with the ministries uh, to promote the sector uh, and we we do regularly collaborations among the members of Vicha to work on uh, common projects. Now if we look at the IT industry in Mauritius there are more than 800 companies right according to the statistic it's around 800 uh, both BPO companies and ICT companies. All these companies employ more than 24,000 people, uh, mostly professionals, and uh, they contribute to around 6% of the GDP. Right, now, today uh, on the island, there are some nine uh, public universities that form graduate for this sector and some 42 private universities and training centers. And during the year, each year, there are some 350 graduates that come out of the universities. Therefore, um, today we can say that there is a, a lack of professionals in the sector in Mauritius because the industry uh, most of the industries are expanding, most of the companies are expanding, and there is a need for more professionals. And there are many of the companies that uh, employ expats either from India, Madagascar, or from Africa, from some of the African countries to work in the, in the companies. And the profile of the companies in Mauritius are mainly small and medium sized size enterprise. Uh, only a few of those companies would have more than 200 employees. Most of them have less than 200 employees. Uh, and most of the companies work with partners, especially the, uh, the multinational uh, like IBM, HP, Microsoft, Oracle. Um, most of the employees in Mauritius, they speak English and French, they're bilingual. And this is an advantage because uh, in most of the companies actually can work for uh, French speaking or English speaking countries in Africa. Uh, many of the companies today are already working with partners outside Mauritius, uh, either in the, uh, with, the, uh, with the nearby islands or countries in Africa, Kenya uh, especially. Um, they have set up office in certain cases in in countries in Africa, and uh, and we welcome opportunities actually for members of the association to partner with companies in in Kenya uh, to work together on opportunities in Africa. Okay. Uh, can do yes. The Get to the question and answer, certainly we can answer part of these questions at the time. 
Yes, certainly. Uh, well, I think uh, many of the uh, people that are around there, they know uh, the industry in Mauritius. Therefore, I'll be glad to provide further information to members here who have questions. I thank, thank you, Vinay. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Thank you so much uh, for your intervention. Uh, before I go to Mr. Ringvia Sitalu uh, from OTEM, uh, uh, is going to deliver uh, just brief us on the on OTEM, the represent uh, the Aid Sourcing and Telecommunication Association of Mauritius. I uh, just want to, to quickly, before Ringvia you speak, uh, uh, just just uh, just appraise you uh, that before we 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 chose the three companies that presented earlier, we had an expression of interest that was launched about three weeks ago, and we had about twelve or thirteen companies that uh, expressed their interest. And I would like to applaud and thank all these thirteen companies for showing interest. But due to the interest of time, we only uh, chose three companies, and it was a panel uh, comprised of Dr. Siganga from Kenya. Uh, there was also EDP present in that panel uh, that we chose companies based on what we thought would give a wide uh, view of what's being done in Mauritius. So it wasn't looking at who, but we were looking at just giving an understanding to our counterparts in Kenya what is happening in Mauritius. And, and hopefully after this uh, uh, webinar, uh, you can all uh, interact with each other to better understand the need of each other. So Mr. Envier, uh, if you could uh, now just take us through uh, OTEM and its mission in Mauritius and how you will support us. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. Um, uh, I'll, I'll be short, uh, uh, I'll be more brief than, than Ken. So uh, just to give you uh, an insight on, on OTAM. So OTAM, we are, an, we are an association that was created in 2004. Uh, our mission statement is to provide a business friendly and competitive environment conducive to the growth of the ICT industry in Mauritius. So uh, being uh, a, 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 a very big part of the ecosystem, uh, the ICT and BPO ecosystem of Mauritius, we uh, we have taken on ourselves to uh, collaborate uh, regionally, uh, locally as well uh, uh, as regionally, uh, with collaborations uh, with uh, in Mal with uh, our counterparts in Madagascar also. So uh, we today have 31 members uh, ranging from the BPO and the telecommunications uh, sector. Uh, our main aim today is towards addressing the challenges of the sector uh, and working together with the government and other institutions to promote uh, uh, the telecommunication uh, industry here uh, in Mauritius. Uh, we are here also to help uh, assisting in the business side, how we can promote uh, the island. Uh, it's uh, players uh, in the local, regional and uh, in a larger scale, uh, our, what we are doing in Mauritius, what are our capabilities, what we can bring as, uh, as uh, an, a, a value add to uh, other market players uh, here. Uh, we are also contributing towards providing uh, statistics on how businesses are being done uh, here in Mauritius and re regionally so that we can align to the new market dynamics. Uh, <clears throat> we have always uh, been here at the service of our members. So uh, today, uh, all our members are actively contributing uh, to uh, the development of the ICT sector here in Mauritius. And like Kem told uh, before, uh, Mauritius being a bi bilingual country, so it provides uh, a very good uh, and platform for growth in the, for French speaking countries as, as well as English speaking countries. Uh, today, uh, if we see uh, what uh, we've been doing lately is uh, we've been uh, working very, very closely with the government to introduce new clusters uh, and enable and enabling members to participate and being more active towards promoting their their activities uh, in, in, in the market. Uh, if we see also what the government has put in place in terms of uh, budget measures uh, to promote more collaboration or more innovative 
uh, ideas uh, and growth in the island, like setting up of a fin fintech innovation lab by the Bank of Mauritius. We are supportive of the government uh, initiatives, and uh, we are here to work closely with all the all the sector members, all the stakeholders, as well as the government, to provide a platform where everyone can have the the, the fair share of uh, of business. So this is what uh, OTAM has been doing. Uh, since its creation, and we are here to assist all all the stakeholders uh, to to grow uh, in this business. That's it. For me. Thank you. Thank you very much. For me. So, so now that we have listened from all the uh, the the, the, the finance from Mauritius, uh, we have seen the companies. We have an idea of what's been done in Mauritius. We have an idea of how uh, Ota and Mitya are driving the sector wide transformation and the collaborative nature of what we are doing. And uh, let's now uh, have the opportunity to hear from our friends and colleagues in Kenya on the developments in Kenya, the development in the market, and the expectations. Um, we will have for three excellent speakers. But unfortunately, we have only five minutes to each of you. So, Dr. Siganga, I would first call you to, to, to share with us uh, your observations and how we can collaborate together in Mauritius and Kenya. And thank you, Dr. Siganga, for helping us to put this together, the selection process, and in designing this webinar as well. So, Dr. Siganga, without further, further ado, please do have the floor. Thank you, Vinay. First of all, I'd like to welcome our Mauritian uh, counterparts and also thank the, the organizers, both in Kenya and in Mauritius, for making this, uh, this event uh, possible. I'm the chairman of the Computer Society of Kenya. Uh, the Computer Society of Kenya has corporate members, that is ICT companies, uh, well over 600 of, of, of them, uh, ranging from uh, small and medium enterprises to very large uh, uh, organizations within the ICT sector. Uh, in Kenya. Uh, and uh, Kenya and Mauritius, I think, they share close commercial bonds, uh, both being in the same Eastern Africa region and also being members of, uh, of uh, COMESA. Uh, also, both countries have uh, vibrant ICT sectors that are fast growing and uh, uh, taken as a high priority sector, sectors by, by the governments of both countries. Uh, and then in Kenya, we have some comparative advantages. As Manish mentioned in his presentation, a lot of the ICT, latest ICT progress is made through having good connections. Kenya, we have very good internet connections. We are well served by marine cables. And in that sense, it is very easy for us to collaborate with the partners from countries such as Mauritius. Uh, Kenya also acts as a hub for the ICT industry within the East and Central African uh, region. So I think it could be uh, uh, quite uh, uh, progressive for, country, for companies from uh, Mauritius to collaborate with, with the uh, companies in Kenya uh, with a view to expanding into the broader uh, East and Central African uh, uh, market. Uh, if I can just mention a few of the areas in Kenya that uh, are fast growing and where, where it could be useful to uh, collaborate, and I've had uh, this mentioned by the three companies uh, that presented here. I think they represent a good portion of what uh, the ICT that is happening in Mauritius and that can uh, actually work together with the ICT industry in Kenya. These include BPO. Kenya is very strong in BPO. It has been strong for the last 10, 15 years. Ever since the marine cables landed in the country, we have been having uh, very successful call centers and uh, other uh, services that are offered through the BPO mechanism. Well, Kenya is also very strong in telecommunications. We have uh, large telecommunications companies. I'm sure you have heard of a company like Safaricom, uh, and uh, the one, they are the ones who developed the famous uh, financial uh, tool, uh, M-Pesa. Uh, Kenya is also strong in uh, develop, uh, as, uh, for developing uh, softwares, both for uh, the, uh, the mobile apps and the normal uh, uh, software developments. And uh, generally in cloud services, I think Kenya is also very strong and willing to uh, collaborate and uh, uh, cooperate with the companies from, from Mauritius to explore not, not just the Kenyan market, but the, as I said, the overall uh, East and Central African uh, uh, market. So I look forward to these discussions that we have had here initially with the three companies, 
which I also thank for their presentations. Uh, I look forward to in future, uh, not just uh, engaging with these three companies, but uh, since they are just representing the ICT the sector in Mauritius, maybe expanding to other country, uh, companies and uh, making sure that those companies uh, find ways in which they can collaborate with their Kenyan counterparts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sibanga, and thank you for being so brief and to the point. And certainly, uh, we know that uh, the infrastructures uh, in Kenya and also the avail avail availability to skills in Kenya is something that is very attractive. Something that Mr. Kemboe mentioned earlier also is the lack of, of, of uh, professionals in uh, to develop in Mauritius, where we have a lot of foreigners coming to Mauritius. So this is another thing that I'm sure there could be areas of collaboration. But without further ado, I would like to call Ms. Josephine Andabuki from Kansas. The Technopol Technopolis Development Authority, and this is a new development which I'm sure everybody would be keen to hear from. Unfortunately, uh, Josephine, please, within five minutes, try to introduce what you are doing, and then I'm sure there will be questions in, in, in the development plan. Thank you, uh, Josephine. It's up to you. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and for the wonderful presentations. I think uh, it's a good afternoon session, and we are in very good company. Uh, my name is Josephine Dambuki from Konza Technopolis. I will be speaking or making remarks on behalf of my CEO, engineer John Tanui. And uh, to facilitate that, I will be sharing a presentation. Kindly allow me to do that. And uh, I hope to keep my five minutes uh, quickly. So just to introduce, uh, I'm presenting on behalf of my CEO, engineer John Tanui who also doubles up as a chairman, the, the, the current president for the International Association of Science Parks and Areas of Innovation in the African Division. And uh, about Konza Technopolis, we are uh, the true, the heart of the Silicon Savannah. When we started, I had uh, someone saying Kenya is known as an innovation ecosystem uh, space, a very innovative country. And uh, Konza Technopolis is actually the Silicon Savannah, and it was set up by the government in, the, in 10 years ago to really uh, bring together the innovation ecosystem and, the, the, and to spur the country's innovation uh, platform to the next level. So we are under the Ministry of ICT, and uh, we are contributing to the Kenyan Vision 2030 agenda under the economic uh, development pillar. And so as we uh, continue to, to, to work, we are really developing a smart city and an area of innovation, and we want to contribute to the country's knowledge-based economy. And to do this, we are actually developing a city, ground up, uh, 5,000 acres, of a smart city and a place that will truly bring together the technology, the innovation ecosystem powered by the three sectors of ICT, life sciences and engineering, and driven by research and development, education and commercial development. We believe that Africa has the potential to create solutions for its own needs. We have uh, had some progress from the Kenyan context, and we are therefore creating a space where we can provide a platform for all these uh, players to come together uh, to innovate and really scale the innovations. And so we have put in place some developments to support this agenda. We have a university which is a Korea, Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, which is modeled under the Korea Advanced Science of in, uh, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, a technology university postgraduate focusing on research. And the idea is that uh, we'll have research happening and commercialization of that research. Of course, we are building the smart city, providing area of innovation, a special economic zone, and also bringing together all these players, the academia, the industry, the, um, the development entities, and also the innovators in a space that they can leverage on the synergies of each other to create new solutions for Kenya and for the East African region and for Africa and the world. Uh, you can see we have um, our offices at Kwanzaa. The city is up and running. We are working from there. And I would welcome all these presenters when they are coming to Kenya. Please make a visit at Kwanzaa. We are also uh, have uh, we are having two data centers. One is a 
what we call phase one data center, which is up and running. I had one of the presenters talking about undersea connectivity. We are also connected to the team's cable and uh, of course uh, tapping into the national fiber optic grid. Uh, we are powering businesses leveraging cloud infrastructure and therefore for any businesses that are looking for cloud services, uh, Kwanzaa is a place for you. We are also hosting the national data center and oh, this is the data center that is uh, going to support a lot of our government initiatives, digitizing the government and really placing our government's uh, operations to the level of uh, where they should be and of course also supporting the private entities. We have uh, one of the state of art uh, water treatment facility and also waste, waste collection and waste um, uh, collection facilities. So very, very modern technologies that are coming up at Kwanzaa Technopolis really to support this, the, the city's growth and also to enable uh, technology for the next uh, fourth industrial revolution. We are very keen on innovation. As I said, we have been working to catalyze and connect the innovation ecosystem in the country. And we do this by working with the existing network of hubs and um, association within the technology space to come up and, in, and, and work in a supportive environment. We have had some challenges running, and for us, we do the challenges in collaboration with industry or with the private sector, with international organizations, and just providing our an opportunity for our, our innovation to be able to trial and also to be able to accelerate their innovation. So this is just some of the works that we are doing. And because we are in Ministry of ICT, we are also influencing policy. Uh, we work very closely uh, with the national government in putting in place policies that would uh, provide a good environment for the country to advance its ICT uh, agenda. Uh, some of the policies include the national National ICT policy, national broadband policy, national uh, master plan on ICT, and the digital economy uh, blueprint. All this geared to create an enabling environment for the ICT sector to really achieve its opportunities. So what can you find at Konza? I think as we are building the city ground up, there's opportunities for literally every sector. We have real estate opportunities, education. We are an economic zone, and so we are attracting enterprises in the economic zone space. We also are very efficient in our systems, and we are encouraging innovation for e-commerce, for trade and development around that. We have mentioned that we have our data center that is uh, supporting enterprises who uh, need to operate in the cloud uh, environment. We have a light industry, a light manufacturing center, and we're also developing centers of excellence. So all these are opportunities for engagement and opportunities for collaboration. We are developing state-of-the-art infrastructure across uh, literally almost all levels and therefore also we are working a lot in partnership to really bring to life uh, infrastructure to power the city's need. This include uh, energy, water, uh, road networks, green buildings, all these uh, solutions we are putting in place. We also are very keen on hospitality. We are, build, we are building one of what should be a regional hospitality conference center, and we want to continue leading the region in hospitality and especially technology uh, enabled uh, conferences and such uh, fora should be happening at Kwanzaa Technopolis. And so we believe that uh, the world is moving towards um, a global platform and the place of partnerships cannot be understated. Uh, now we are all working across a platform to be able to organize this webinar, linking ourselves and and Mauritius. And so we believe that this is the future and we are therefore really open for partnerships and collaborations around creation of new value, development of the technology ecosystem, and also really just unlocking the opportunities within um, the technology space. And as we do this, uh, we are powered around uh, three things. We see opportunities in, in collaborations for growth, for investments. Um, again, I've had uh, quite a number of technology companies in Mauritius, perhaps looking to to have presence in Kenya, uh, Kwanzaa should, Technopolis should be a destination of thought because you'll find not only a place but also the ecosystem to support your growth need. We also believe that uh, we can put together policies that will enhance this sector that we are creating and therefore we are working in close collaboration with the players to put in place uh, regulatory uh, policies and propose uh, this policies to the government to enable uh, them being implemented to support the growth of our 
ICT sector. And so I see um, as how do we increase this uh, trade and investment? Um, as we were looking and preparing for this, we noted that the two countries have a vision 2030. And the vision of the two countries is actually uh, to position itself in the digital economy, which is what is emerging. And of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has only accelerated the need for uh, us to move uh, towards this digital economy and therefore at Kwanza we also acknowledge that uh, there has been efforts from the government in 2019 there was a forum organized on uh, e commerce around uh, Mauritius and Kenya collaboration and therefore we believe that such forums can be very uh, can be very instrumental in showcasing what is possible and also just connecting opportunities across the different countries. Would be very happy to facilitate perhaps another conversation of this uh, nature, where we are linking the innovators, the technology companies in Mauritius with some of the counterparts in Kenya, so that then we can start seeing a close pollination and even just uh, the businesses getting to understand our market. We believe that we are bringing together a talent force uh, to take to be ready for the fourth industrial revolution and therefore for the companies that are looking for talent uh, i think they would also be looking uh, to find that talent from kenya so that they can really achieve uh, their ambition in terms of uh, how to leverage the policies i think we have other uh, policies such as the international free trade agreement comesa and such that really we can look at and explore uh, opportunities for collaboration looking at the wider sector also beyond just technology for technology, but sectors such as manufacturing, tourism, agriculture, all these provide a good opportunity for innovation and for continued growth of uh, enterprise. And so we say that uh, at Kwanzaa Technopolis, we are building the future and we welcome all of you to join us to build forward together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josephine. This is very exciting, and I, I'm sure that uh, in the near future we could have a webinar just on uh, Kwanzaa Technopolis uh, to the Mauritian stakeholders here. Uh, we will look into that going forward. So let's, uh, uh, without further ado, call in our last speaker for the day, Mr. Norman Gunnett from Ken Invest, which is our co partner in everything that we do in Kenya. We always work with Ken Invest, and it's a wonderful partnership that we have. So please, Mr. Norman, uh, you have the floor. All right, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Norman Gunnett. Um, I'm representing my CEO. Let me just turn on my video so that you can see me. All right, so share my screen. Norman, just be brief so that we can have a few questions. Yeah, I'll be brief. I'll be brief. brief, brief. So, yeah, so, so thank you. So, thank you. Just my presentation is almost similar to what uh, Josephine was talking about. Just give you a bit of uh, an update on uh, some bit of a, an, uh, an overview of Kenya. Uh, Kenya, um, Kenya's GDP right now, I think it's over $100 billion. We've been receiving uh, FDI in 2019 of about $1.3 billion. Of course, these numbers went down uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, we have a very interesting population. Most of our population is about 0 to 14 years, about 40 percent. So we have got a good uh, young population in the country. Of course, we speak uh, very good English. Um, our GDP per capita in 2019 was uh, over $2,000. And our political system is uh, devolved. We've got um, some very interesting and um, flowery politics, but uh, uh, that's, that's about us. And uh, we've got a very good climate as a country. So yeah, we've been known as a country which is known as uh, the Silicon Savannah. I don't have to belabor this. I think Konza uh, has spoken about this. And of course, the ICT sector has really been contributing to our GDP, uh, uh, bringing up to 80% of uh, the country's GDP has been driven by uh, IT and enabled services. Kenya is really driven by mobile. Uh, most of our population are, uh, access the internet through using mobile devices. We've got a very good coverage, of course, at over 86% uh, 4G coverage and internet uh, penetration. Of course, comparatively with Africa, looking at 34% and 86%, we, we are really way ahead there. And um, this sector has really been expanding uh, in 2017, 2018, it grew by 12.9%. We don't have the recent statistics, but I think this is something really growing. And um, 
moving forward, uh, just a high level of connectivity, and I think really been mentioned, so I don't have to go back into this presentation. What I want to speak about is, um, um, let me see, in terms of, uh, let me just go forward. In terms of the sector regulation and the policy framework, then I'll just go into the specific opportunities in Kenya. So in terms of regulation, there's a national ICT policy 2019, which regulates this sector, the Kenya Communications and Information, uh, Information and Communication Amendment Act 2013, We've got a new data protection law, uh, which was passed into law last year. Right now, even this is an office of the data protection uh, uh, commissioner. So when you have concerns about your data protection issues and concerns, we're already way ahead of Africa on that. We've got the ICT master plan, which is a blueprint towards transforming Kenya into a digital and digital ICT hub. And uh, the, the, the different because if uh, more than 60% of the ICT uh, ministry budget has actually been going to the development of Konza, Konza Technopolis. We've got uh, the national broadband strategy, uh, national security strategy, and uh, security is being implemented by national ICT authority. In terms of regulatory environment, of course, we have the communications authority, uh, which is responsible for regulating this sector, both it spans telecommunications, broadcasting, e-commerce, postal and courier, and, and of course what has done, what has happened is uh, the authority has put in place a unified licensing framework. So in terms of licensing, we don't have to really struggle about having multiple licenses uh, investing in the sector because you just need one sector, which, uh, one license, either as a network facilities provider, an application service provider, or a content service provider. Um, that's uh, about the legal and regulatory framework. I'm trying to move faster. So, so why Kenya for investment? One is uh, we've got a very conducive investment climate. Um, we've got a very progressive companies act. In fact, right now, you, it's possible to set up a company in Kenya in a single day. Uh, when you come to the Kenya Investment Authority, we actually have representation from the company registry, and they can actually help you to set up your company online on a single day. Uh, most of the government services, of course, digitalized. Of course, as you can see, we've been ranked as the third most reformed country in 2016. We're a very vibrant private sector. We are strategically located, uh, of course, very strong infrastructure. We've just launched a new port uh, a few months ago from uh, the port of Lamu. We've got the main port in Mombasa. So you can actually get into any destinations in Africa from, 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 from Kenya. Of course, we've got a very good skilled talent pool an excellent business ecosystem. Uh, we've got a sophisticated market uh, of 114% mobile, mobile penetration, uh, access to regional markets, very good literacy rates, where we have adult retail literacy rates of over 72% and 80% uh, of youth. Uh, very vibrant startup ecosystem. You must have been seeing a lot of startups being funded uh, in this country. I think we are one of the top uh, leading uh, destinations for venture capital uh, in, in, in this market right now, apart from, of course, uh, maybe Nigeria and uh, partly South Africa. Supportive government, the government really supporting a very good infrastructure. We have over four fiber optic cables coming in into Nairobi and into Kenya through the port of Mombasa. So, um, the government has something called the Big Four Agenda, and it's really been focusing on trying to push in technology as the root of, of the Big Four Agenda. So you can see there are quite a number of opportunities in multiple sectors, in healthcare, in food security, affordable housing, in manufacturing. And of course, when you look at fintech, Kenya is of course pretty much known as a fintech hub. A lot of fintech uh, players uh, coming after the footsteps of M-Pesa. There's quite a number of interesting companies in the fintech space, uh, like I think there's quite a number, I've just listed a number of them here. Yeah. The reason then we will proceed to closing the event. Yeah, all right, all right. So I think I will share the rest of my presentation because of time. Um, uh, what you could do is I'll share this presentation with you, and then from there we can we can talk after that. Otherwise, uh, the rest of the details are on our website, invest.geo.ke, and uh, you can get my contacts after this presentation. Thank you.
Thank you, Nomi. Nomi, I know you got a lot to say. I know Ken Invest is doing a lot of work. Uh, thank yes. you for the, 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 the policies, the frameworks and everything, and I'm sure everybody wanted to see that. And uh, I'm sure there will be questions for you as well. And uh, in the interest of we're just cutting it short, but I know it's not doing any justice to what you have to share with everybody else. But certainly, I'm sure we're going to have more frequent events between Mauritius and Kenya. And uh, I'm going to see with my colleague, uh, Patima, uh, do we have any questions? Uh, uh, from no, we don't see questions. Uh, anybody from the audience would like to ask a question? I uh, would like to go for one or two questions before we'll ask Mr. Gayo Gambi, who is the representative, the manager for, for, for EDB in Kenya, uh, to do the closing. But first, let's uh, see if there's any question for any of the speakers today. No, no question about the technopolis, uh, which I think it's a uh, it's uh, you know it's something fantastic. Uh, again, you maybe you would like to do your observations in closing, and then uh, uh, before we thank everybody. Uh, thank you, Vinay, uh, and thank you very much, uh, all participants. It's been an awesome, insightful event. I just want to register my appreciation to the panelists for the remarks and for the opportunities that presented. I think for the businesses, we just want to assure you that this is not the end of it. This is just but the beginning of establishing partnerships and linkages. And as EDB, we avail ourselves to support your inquiries and interest. We also avail ourselves to, to ensure that uh, the businesses thrive between Kenya and Mauritius. As rightly mentioned, there's a lot of opportunities and the players are ready to, to have linkages and cooperations. And needless to say this, uh, by 2027, most of people will be working from home. Um, that, that means that there's a lot of opportunity for ICT, and we see partnership and linkages and harnessing of the expertise we have in Kenya and Mauritius as the way to go. So on behalf of the Communication uh, uh, Complex Society of Kenya and Ken Invest and, and, and EDB, I just want to say that we are available to support you. Working with Maya, we'll be putting up a profile of the interested companies and see to it that we circulate this in the EDB website, in the Computer Society website, so that people can continuously engage each other. So we are hopeful that all of us have registered and we have your contacts and that we'll be able to continue engaging. So Vinay, thank you for the moderation. Well done. Thank you, Maya, for the excellent job done. Thank you, Dr. Waunda and um, Marlinda for the support. So we just want to say that we'll continue working together on this. Uh, keep us busy by sending up your inquiries, your interests, your profiles, and it's going to be prudent for us to help you out. I thank you and wish you an excellent evening. Thank you very much. Okay, before we close, as again you have said, uh, please make sure that your details have been sent because we're going to share with all the parties today and please actively engage with one another talk about the opportunities that you have identified there are a lot of companies in Mauritius that wants to explore the east african market and i think uh, that, that what you have been presenting today the technopolis and also the, the the different developments that are happening in kenya certainly will make sense to all the people that are here today so please uh, the, the the whole uh, uh, session is about you guys to interact so continue the interaction and we're going to keep that we're going to take your feedback and we're going to repeat this event if we have to and if there are requests if you want to have a full session on the technopolis and if you want to get a full uh, understanding on any of the developments in Mauritius as well, we'll be more than happy to facilitate another webinar further down the road. So thank you all for registering. Thank you all for your interest. And I will wish you all success and find the right partner and the right business going forward. Thank you, uh, Jambo, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, DB. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. It's